Children of the American School of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, wanted to talk to astronaut Chris Cassidy on board the International Space Station, but since they had no one around to help them do this radio contact, they uh, turned to a good old Belgium radio station, which helped uh, children from Spain previously to do this uh, cool interview with the ISS astronauts. So they uh, contacted uh, this radio station in Belgium via the internet. ON4 ISS actually performed the radio contact. And since uh, I happen to be around here, all the communication over Europe, I'm able to receive and I will add students questions from uh, Aris YouTube uh, channel for a better understanding since uh, no one is capable to download uh, students questions only astronauts answers. For the first few minutes of the interview I didn't have contact with the International Space Station so I will insert these uh, few moments as recorded from Aris YouTube channel. Has the coronavirus pandemic affected the safety protocols aboard the ISS in any way, or is it? Hi, Pedro. Thanks for your question. Before I answer Pedro's question, I'd like to say it's a real treat to talk to the American School of Brazil. I was there personally in November of 2016, uh, and I, very, I remember very fondly visiting the school and the campus and having lunch in the cafeteria. Uh, and talking to the, to the students in, at the gym, in the gymnasium. So uh, thank you very much for calling me today. Pedro, the coronavirus has, has definitely affected how we uh, uh, astronauts prepare for space. We have to maintain a safe, safe uh, distance with protection with a mask. And, uh, and in, the months, in the two months before launch, crew members go into quarantine or more, more strict re, re, uh, uh, protocols. And the last uh, three weeks is very strict quarantine. Over. Lorena, how do you exercise in space so you keep your muscles and bones active? Over. Hi, Lorena. So we have uh, three different exercise devices, a treadmill, a bicycle, and a weightlifting machine. The weightlifting machine is actually uh, air resistance in a, in a, a vac vacuum cylinder that we can adjust the piston up and down and provide the resistance and we can uh, move the, the bar to accommodate leg upper body exercises and that's how we keep our bones nice and strong. It's, it's nice that we get uh, our muscles toned, but really it's our bone health that we care a great deal about uh, from this exercise. Over. On behalf of George, has your goal always been getting into space since you were a child, or did you have different interests when you were a child? Over. So George, thanks for the question. When I was a child, I, I liked sports a great deal, and I, I was uh, in, had visions of playing sports or being a coach or being a referee in some kind of uh, sporting event. I liked basketball a great deal. But as I grew older, I became more interested in, in uh, math and science and, uh, and then ultimately an engineering degree at, in graduate school. And as I was learning all these um, academic things, I realized that being an astronaut is something that anybody can apply to do and, and fill out the, the, the packet to become one. So that's what motivated me as I, as I grew, grew more interest in science and, and technology over. On behalf of Kyle, do you support a football team, and if so, how do you follow them from space? Over. Well, we we um, we do follow the news and we follow sports. And we we can uh, occasionally get on the internet, but we have a news daily news and daily sports broadcasts uh, recorded and sent up to us. So this is how we follow along, especially when there's big big sporting events going on. Although this particular uh, time and space for me. It's marked by the coronavirus pandemic, and so there's not much sports going on in the world. My favorite fo American football team are the New England Patriots, and uh, I, I, I haven't quite got a uh, soccer uh, favorite team quite yet. Um, Maite, what are some of the most memorable moments you've had since becoming an astronaut? Over. Okay, nice question. So, 
the moon in 1969, we have made multiple trips to space in which we have learned a lot about it. What would you consider would be the next step for humans in space exploration? Elena, that's an easy one for us because we very much know our goal. Our goal is to get uh, humans on Mars. Uh, we will very likely take an intermediate step and return people to the moon sometime in the next uh, handful of years uh, as we sort that out. But by the time you are an astronaut, Elena, I think we will have people going to Mars for us. On behalf of Santiago, how does sound differ in space from on Earth? Are there any big differences in what you hear? Or is it the same? Over. Santiago, inside the space station, it, it sounds a lot uh, the same as what you're used to. Uh, we have a lot of background noises, fans, machinery noises, and pumps, uh, so it's a little bit noisy inside the space station. Outside the space station, it's a vacuum of, of space, and the sound does not trap propagate through the vacuum, so there's really nothing to hear uh, out, out there. Uh, over. Leonardo. What was the worst accident that happened in the International Space Station, and how was it dealt with? Over. On the International Space Station, we've been very fortunate that we haven't had too many serious accidents, although one that I'm very familiar with was during a spacewalk seven years ago. I was with uh, an Italian astronaut named Luca Parmitano when his spacesuit malfunctioned and water was flowing into his helmet and filling up the inside volume of his helmet. Uh, we had to hurry up and get back in to get his helmet off. Over. Michele, what is it like to reach escape velocity? Were you scared that your, that your spacecraft would explode during takeoff? If so, how did you handle this fear? Over. When we get on the launch pad, it, we understand that there's a, a giant uh, chemical reaction that's about to happen underneath us and launch us to space. You feel, you don't feel the velocity, you feel the accelerations. So it's during this eight and a half minutes where the rocket is, is accelerating you and pushing you faster and faster that you, you feel pushed to the back of your seat. Do, are we scared? I wouldn't say we're scared because we, we have a great deal of training and preparation and we know that there's backup systems for different, all the types of failures that we can think of at least. So uh, we have a healthy appreciation for what's happening on the launch day. Over. Madeline, after being in the gravity for so long in space, what is it like to return to gravity? Over. Madeline, when we get back to Earth after being gone for all this time, uh, it, our bodies have definitely have to get used to it. It takes several days to feel semi-normal, and it takes several weeks, probably like a month, to feel completely normal. In those first couple of days, we're not allowed to drive a car. We uh, are very wobbly and, uh, and, and need assistance with things like simple things like going down stairs um, or jumping across a sidewalk, uh, off of sidewalk onto a street. But those things come back very quick, uh, pretty much after several days. Over. Olivia, how long does the training take to become an astronaut on the ISS? Over. Hi, Olivia. We train before, when we first get selected, when we have to learn all of the basic activities, this part takes maybe uh, officially two years, but usually it takes folks about five years maybe or so before, five to six years before they fly their first mission, and that depends just case by case. Uh, once you get assigned to a particular mission, it's generally another two years of training with your crewmates before you're ready to launch and come to the space station. Over. Peter, does the absence of gravity make you harder to eat and drink certain foods in space? 
over. The absence of gravity uh, makes, it doesn't affect how it feels to eat, but certain foods are more difficult, particularly ones that are dry, like rice, potato chips, um, things that don't stick together are sometimes challenging, challenging to eat. Things that are wet, where the surface tension of the, of the food keeps it together, it's uh, very convenient to eat this food. Over. Okay, this is Chris on the space station. Thank you very much. Out. Thank you.